Hi, I'm Dr. Thawa. This is my PhD thesis. This is my journal. Writing an impactful journal, PhD proposal and thesis is difficult and many struggle to articulate their thoughts and ideas into a reputable journal and final thesis. But now, with our method and strategy, you can achieve just that. Over the past seven years, we have helped over 56,000 followers in both our Facebook group and page. On proofreading, paraphrasing, structuring, consulting and coaching for journals, PhD proposals, theses, CVs and many more. Our most prized expertise that no other software or company can provide is our language warranty scheme for all of our proofreading services. Oh, wait, 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 we're not done yet. On top of that, we also provide free revisions for all of our consultancy services. With that said, your journal will be published, KPI will be met, your proposal, thesis will be completed, and you will graduate. <sighs> now, we would like to offer you a limited discount of 30% for all of proofreading and paraphrasing services right now. Grab it while you can. Hello, hello, hello. Very good afternoon to everyone. Um, thank you for joining me today. So, um, Today is an exclusive session on concept paper writing, okay? So today we're going to look into what is exactly concept paper. Everyone is talking about concept paper, concept paper, concept paper. Some people are saying concept paper cannot get into Scopus. Some are saying cannot get into ISI. Is it really true? Uh, some are saying concept paper must be written at the, at the beginning of the PhD. Um, some are saying concept paper must be written uh, um, uh, during proposal defense or before proposal defense, it's better to start at the beginning and so on. So what is exactly this concept paper? What is exactly this review paper? Okay. So before we get we get into it, let me explain where we are now. Okay. In terms of uh, uh, what you call that, uh, what we have shared, what I have shared throughout this whole month. Okay. So before we start, um, I'm Dr. Tawa. I'm the chief editor of proofreading by UK PhD. I think most of you know me. Uh, for those who are joining me for the first time, this, these are the sessions that we have completed for this whole month, okay? From how to find research gap to developing research objectives, research questions, uh, theoretical versus conceptual framework, writing a review journal, uh, common mistakes in literature review. And today we're looking into writing a conceptual paper, okay? How, how is it different? What is it exactly, okay? So before we start, I only request one thing, actually two things. Please share the session in groups and pages. Please just hit the share button, okay? Because um, all of you have to understand Facebook doesn't work like Google Meet or Zoom, okay, because uh, they try to limit down the audience as much as possible. So it is all in your hands to hit the share button so that your friends, your colleagues, your supervisor may be able to join and learn some new knowledge to accelerate their research progress, okay. Same goes to the second step. Please tag your friends, your colleagues in the comment column. Please do tag, okay, all right. So um, this is the share button and that is where you tag your friends, all right. So I can see that um, uh, Ms. Shahida is already here. She's excellent in tagging her friends. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Karin, for, for, for tagging. Appreciate that. Okay, so let's get started. So today we're going to look at, this is as part of the thesis general accelerator seminar. Okay, and this is, today is topic number six already. So we are looking at writing a concept paper. There are seven different items that I'll be discussing today. Okay, so please stay with me until we finish the seven items. Um, at the end of the seven items, I can assure that you'll have an idea what to write for your concept paper. Okay, so um, definitely you have an idea. So stay with me until the end, seven different items. Okay, for those who are staying at home due to move on control order, working, uh, working from home, please stay at home because the virus is spreading crazily. Okay, even if you're going to work at work, work still needs to continue. Please take care of yourself. Wear mask all the time. Okay, all the time. All right. So um, with that, let's get started. Okay, so before we get into uh, concept paper, we have a lot of new joiners today. I can see a lot of new joiners. Uh, I can see a lot of people are tagging and tagging and tagging. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. 
so please keep tagging yeah so that your friends will be able to watch us to watch me today share his uh, share his or her experience in writing concept paper and then um, uh, we might be able to help them okay so um, before we get started while i explaining all this please comment who has already written a concept paper and got it published in scopus era or isi journals please do share who is also trying to write and miserably failed please also share so we will know the audience today we will know how all of us are actually struggling to get it right okay for those who has no clue how to write a paper also share okay so that we will know the idea today all right so while sharing don't forget hit the share button as well okay hit the share button share it across groups pages your timeline wherever just hit the share button i can see who is sharing all the time because facebook shows the share icon so for the benefit of everyone please hit the share button and most importantly tag your friends okay so they'll be able to watch us join us all right so these are some of my previous uh, sessions that i've done so far uh, let me show you where you can find it you can actually find it here um that is right there free facebook classes yes i don't do it on youtube because honestly i don't have enough time to do it on youtube and facebook since uh, my entire consultancy and uh, proofreading services are all mostly offered on facebook i love facebook i've been starting you know with facebook currently we have 31.1 thousand followers okay that's quite big for academic uh, arena uh, these followers are from all over the world okay and also we have our group which has uh, almost reaching 37000 Uh, members already so in total we have about 67 68000 followers okay that is what we call combined followers so what can you find in this um, page of mine you can find literature review common mistakes which i shared few days ago two days ago um, how to write review paper okay conceptual framework from theory series 2 first series theoretical framework versus conceptual framework uh, a week ago uh, finding research gap phd defense what to do during defense 25 common questions that you must know before you go for your defense and why bar for those supervisors who are actually don't have time to share with their students don't have time to educate their with their, you know educate their students i totally understand all you need to do is give this link to your students and they can learn quickly they can basically accelerate learning they don't need to go anywhere they don't need to watch any videos just go through my page they will they will be able to speed up the whole research process okay all right that's what i'm providing as part of this um, playlist okay so for an example if you go way back you can find how to write problem statement in thesis uh, why to publish uh, why isi scopus papers getting rejected nine phd key tips that enabled me to graduate before time okay i finished my thesis in 2 years and 6 months i finished my viva and correction all within 2 years and 10 months i think all done okay with 12 publication so that is something that i have shared for those who think it will, be, it will benefit you please go to my playlist how to generate minimum 3 papers from your thesis also i have shared okay so a lot of sharing going on here please go ahead and watch my videos where to watch it well basically this is the link bit.ly/drtawa videos okay all right so i hope all of you will enjoy if i've done anything wrong while well, while well, well, you know if i've shared something wrong or you know if it was not entertaining enough or informative enough i truly apologize okay i've done my best i'm not a, a professional in this area of sharing videos okay so um so again hit the share button tag your friends that's very very important when you're on facebook live all right okay so where do you go and find these videos and uh, you know where do you find our daily tutorials daily sharing effective academic writing currently is growing tremendously infinitely growing okay uh it's already 36000 plus members i forgot to update because i it just keeps growing okay and then when it comes to pages we are already 31000 followers now again i forgot to update as well so we are growing very fast thanks to our videos people are sharing and sharing and sharing thank you for all the sharers who find worth in the videos okay so all you need to do scan this join the group scan this like our page either of it you will definitely be able to watch all my live videos okay and the upcoming live videos as well okay for those who have just joined me don't forget guys tag your friends so that they can keep watching us or later on as well don't forget to share the session all right so now let's go to why concept papers why do you want to write concept papers well to be fair concept paper would be the easiest thing for you to write at the beginning of your phd okay for supervisors they can also let's say they have a lot of kpi from their scopus i mean a lot of kpi in the university 
Scopus papers and so on, you can definitely extract papers from your student's thesis or from your own thesis and form it as a concept paper. But what kind of concept paper can I write? I'm going to share it today. Okay, what are the different types? There's not just one type. Let me tell you that there are many different types. A lot of people are uh, unaware of this. So I'm going to share it today. All right. So concept paper basically bridge existing theories. One of the one of the factor of writing concept paper. You you bridge a lot of theories by writing a review. You can tell what this theory had done, what the theory had done, because you're going to choose theory as part of a chapter two, right? Even that can be a concept paper. As simple as that. That can be a concept paper which goes very much deep into theories. What other people have done about theories? How much of development they have done? What is lacking in these theories? And from there, you can form and take that content to your this is chapter two. Of course, you can do that. Okay, people can. I, I I did that. Most of the time, I wrote a lot of papers. Okay, in my PhD, not most of them. That's what I did. Okay, I, I wrote a lot of papers, and I just copied all the papers into my thesis. That's that's how I could write my thesis within, uh, I would say, one to one and a half months. My whole thesis is done. Two hundred and, if I'm not mistaken, two hundred and seventy pages, all done because of my publications. Okay, I just copied everything across. All right. So this is important, guys. I'm going to give you some strategy today. Therefore, it is important as much as I'm sharing for you as well. Please share the session. Tag your friends in the comment column. OK, so you can bridge existing theories. Next thing, you can link past papers across disciplines. OK, let's say you're doing a psychological study in business management environment. You can link business management review, psychology review. You can combine all of that. Make a concept paper. OK, you can find a gap based on it. So you can do that as well. Next thing. It provides multi-level insights. So maybe you can provide, let's say, business psychology example. You can look into the insights of how psychology is affecting business. You can look at the insights of how psychology is further growing due to stress and so on. How is people working from home, you know, is getting affected in terms of psychology because of COVID, okay? And how it's getting uh, through, you know, working environment. So, so, so many different things you can look at one study in various angles, okay? That's why we call it multi-level insights, okay? And it paves way to new gaps. Okay, the concept paper paves way to new gaps. So therefore, it's important for you to write concept paper as part of your PhD. You have to do that. Okay, it's good. All right. Next thing, uh, this is something very painful. Greater freedom and page length. Okay, greater freedom to write concept paper because it's not like SLR. SLR paper or scoping review, systematic literature review is SLR or scoping review. They are very much restricted. Good in a way, very robust, but they're restricted. But concept paper is very open. You can write freely as how you want it to be. Okay. All right. So earlier I asked a question. Let's see. Um, um, okay. Let me see for those questions. Uh, so there's question. What is concept paper, doctor? Concept paper is basically a narrative review paper. It's a review paper. Basically, you are talking about what had been done in different angles and what is missing in those papers, what is wrong with those papers that require you to write this review paper. That is basically concept paper, all right? Uh, but concept paper has methodology. Maybe you can include framework and so on, okay? Um, so we have another user here, another participant. He's basically writing concept paper. All the best to you. No clue what is concept paper. Hopefully, you'll get a clue today, all right? Um, so, uh, Dr. Fariha, thank you for joining. Okay, joining is super easy as well. Thank you very much for joining me today. Okay, so um, we have a lot of new joiners today, actually. Okay, all right. So, let's get back to this. Concept paper, it provides greater freedom and page length. So, SLR doesn't give you that, but SLR is very robust. So, there is pros and cons. Okay, there's pros and cons. But if you're going to start to write, concept paper is good. If you're a beginner, concept paper is good. Okay, concept paper is easy to extract from thesis. That's what, as part of the essential services that we provide, you know, in so many years, extracting paper from thesis is part of our very, very strong service that we provide. And it's very, very effective. Okay, many scopers and many ISI papers became, came because of that. All right. But concept paper has more editorial rope to hang the authors. That means there's a lot of a lot of restriction, a lot of restriction, okay? A lot of restriction and a lot of rules that you must follow and beat to get it published, okay? I'll show you an example later, all right? So how many of you have gotten their concept paper rejected? Be honest, okay? Be honest, please share how many of you, because then the newcomers will know that it's not actually easy or newcomers might think that it's actually easy, okay? So please share your experience, how many of you got rejected? Let's see how many of you actually tried and, you know, actually 
uh, didn't make it and still trying to make it through. All right. Okay. So we have a question here for Mr. Patiban. We know how many theories and papers need to be reviewed for concept paper. Uh, there is no limitation. There is no limitation because it depends on how many papers can you find. Okay, how many papers can you find? Don't, don't go too many because then the review become too broad. I would say for a review paper, anything from um, 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 20 references would, would be good. 20 references would be good. Some only uses 15, some uses 40. So it depends on the study, depends on how frequently people publish in your area. Okay, I hope that answered. Okay, so there's another question. Concept paper need to consist chapter 1, 2, 3, right, doctor? Depends. Some concept paper doesn't include the framework. It only includes chapter 1 and 2. Some includes the method. So they include the framework as well. So example, you're going to talk about theory, which I'll explain shortly. Uh, then you don't need a, 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 a method. Okay, so that depends entirely. So my concept paper was rejected too. It's okay, Ms. Noraza, don't worry. That's why we are here today to learn, to see how we can actually get it published. Okay, so don't worry about it. Do share. Uh, Dr. Fariha is here, my very good friend. It's not easy to accept it for review, but it's not easy at all. Okay, because it's it's straightforward to write. Not not exactly straightforward. Actually, it's you have a lot of opportunity to write. So uh, it becomes tough because there is no actual um, empirical data in your paper. So uh, it's very much frowned upon by editors and reviewers. So you must make it so strong that you can get it published. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So now let's go to the next part. All right. So what are these? Okay, I'm talking about SLR, I'm talking about scoping, I'm talking about concept paper, narrative. What are all these? Okay, what are all these? What the heck are all these? There is empirical paper, then there is, um, um, what do you call that, experimental paper, then there is data analysis paper, then there is a, a case study paper, then there is, a, what do you call that, letters, letter journals, um, then there is review paper, then there's SLR. What are all these? I'm already new to PhD or I'm already I've already finished my PhD and I've published much. Uh, but there's so many things people doing now. So what it is, okay, what, is, what are all these exactly? Okay, let me tell you, forget empirical paper today. Forget analysis paper today. Forget experimental paper today. Leave, leave all that out. Free your mind. Look at only review paper today, okay? Because review paper, you can publish. The, the, the beauty of review paper is you can publish without having data. That's the beauty of it. You can publish if you get it right, if you know the concept to write the review paper, you can get it published without the data. That's the beauty of it. Okay. All right. So these are all the breakdown of types of review papers. Systematic review, meta-analysis based systematic, quantitative, meta-analysis based qualitative systematic. All of these are under systematic review. You can come back to this later to pause and read through. I'm not going to run through all of it, but I'm giving you this information. You can make use of it. All right. So here gives all the advantages and disadvantages and so on. Okay. These are all systematic review papers based on a very specific robust guideline from Prisma. Okay. All right. My, my dearly friend, Dr. Harold is very good in this area. So please go and attend his workshop. This is pretty good. We have proofread and paraphrased all of his ISI Q1 papers from last year to this year. And thankfully, it's all published. And it's a proven fact that SLR paper can get you into ISI Q1. High impact factor journal. We went as far as 7.8, 7.4 impact factor. All right. Scoping review as well. I've done a lot for, for medical uh, professors and lecturers and students. All of them got into ISIQ1. Minimal ISIQ2. All right. But when it comes to narrative review, which concept paper bases on, all right, narrative review. Narrative review means there is, if you look at your narrative review, guidelines empty. No guidelines. Freehand. It's up to you how you want to write. So the best thing is benchmark with another paper. I will share with you another paper. I'll share with you a paper later, which you can benchmark. Also, my client's paper, Prof. Sazali's paper, my very good friend as well. I'm going to share his paper, a very simple concept paper. They actually got into uh, Scopus Emerald Q2. And it's an ESCI paper as well, journal as well. Okay. So narrative review, critical review, conceptual review. This We're talking about this today, conceptual review, state of the review. These are all the same. But here, narrative review, researcher determines the literature to include. There is no robust guideline. Less time intensive may include literature of varied methodologies and so on and so forth. So these are all narrative review. And these are all the disadvantages. And these are all the applications. So conceptual review, evaluate general consensus on the topic, show gaps of knowledge in literature. That's the whole idea of concept paper. Okay, I hope that is clear. 
so um if any of you have any questions you can feel free to ask please feel free so while you guys are here this is only the second part we have five more parts to go only second part now so before we go any further don't forget to hit the share button it's just a hitting <laughs> share it across group and pages don't forget to tag your friends in the comment column all right so now third part starting from theories and concepts when it comes to concept paper okay these are the parts that you really need to look into to build your concept paper okay first thing arguments are not derived from data you must remember that it's not from data so you solely rely on literature review so your literature review skills must be very good and your critical writing must be very 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 good okay if you just merely copy and paste literature this guy had done that this guy had done this this guy had done that it won't work okay it won't work it's also good to have a literature matrix it's good to have not necessarily must have good to have okay next thing these are the two types of um what do you call it these are the two types of uh, papers that you can actually um, initiate okay, under concept paper there are two different uh, criteria which you can initiate first one is focal phenomenon based that means the the paper focuses on a certain phenomenon all right argue based on a phenomenon that existing research is not adequate so from there you build your review so this is based on the result of some few papers that you find it not good enough that you want to create a gap so you write a concept paper based on focal phenomenon based okay another one is focal theory based this is theoretical gap all right basically certain theories are not enough so you have to do certain amount of work to get a focal theory based paper which is basically certain study is not incomplete a okay, certain study is not incomplete to develop certain theories okay actually i put a typo here certain study is incomplete my mistake sorry certain study is incomplete to develop certain theory okay so let me just quickly edit that um okay certain study sorry about that certain study is incomplete to develop certain theory so bring in other theories other concepts to address those theories theoretical gap this is more of application gap or practical gap so these are two different things so you can either take your paper down the practical gap route or theoretical gap choose one all right better don't mix up avoid mixing up because then the paper will be too much take either one route okay all right so let's go to the next one okay how do we know this okay let me share how do we know this how do we actually very sure of what we are sharing so you cannot simply tell trust of what everyone says you must know their track record okay for me my personal track record is excellent okay in terms of publication but it slowed down because i'm more into consulting now but what i have done is to enable many others to actually publish in the in in, in whole whole world actually okay at least up to 33 countries so far all right so this is some of our track record i'm a bit lazy to update this okay there are many different papers that i haven't updated i'm sorry about that and we have went through actually we have went through up to impact factor 13 or 14 so far okay so these are some of the papers some of very very strong scientific reports paper q1 as well slr paper from dr harold we worked on it as well paraphrasing and so on so a uh, paraphrasing proofreading and so on so these are mostly consultancy paraphrasing proofreading many different aspects that we have uh, helped our clients our students lecturers professors and so on okay so based on this i have gained a lot of knowledge okay i basically research into publications now okay all right so from that let me tell you where can you write this review concept papers where can you generate this that also is important for you to know okay because then you have a thesis you don't know where to extract from so now we are in part number 4 still got three more parts to go so stay with me okay now we have to find out where do i extract paper so this is a framework that i solely designed actually received a lot of a lot of very very good positive feedback from this diagram because then student now now they know which step to do so this is our consultancy framework when you come to us for help for proofreading and so on this is the framework that we base on some people got more than five chapters if you look at it, this one n set chapter four and five well if you got six seven eight is just an addition at step eight doesn't matter okay but uh, we just look at the basic model of five chapters all right when you finish your first 10 pages preliminary proposal 
Okay, that means which includes the initial idea of introduction, from statement. This is what we normally help out on consultancy. When students come to us, they say, I don't know what topic, what title to start, or my, my supervisor is rejecting my proposal, PhD proposal, what am I supposed to do, and so on. We start with step one. Very easy, so that you don't waste time writing three chapters and then getting screwed over. All right? So, so best is start with minimal 10 pages proposal, which is this. Once you start with this, then you once your supervisor agrees, Okay, there are many supervisors here today, I can see. This is a good method for you, um, for supervisors as well. This is what we normally practice. Um, this is how my supervisor practiced with me. So I, I carry on the same idea because it's very effective. In step two then, we start off with full proposal, chapters one to three. What do you develop as part of this proposal? Only after this get approval. So once you develop these two, you finish your proofreading, okay, finish your proofreading, then you go for general extraction here. This general extraction, you can extract two concept papers, one on the theory, one on the theoretical, one on the theory, one on the practical application. You can. One, you can do conceptual paper, chapter one, two, three, and one more SLR paper just focuses on chapter two. You can. You have to know how to strategize to split the content. The strong one, you keep it for ISI. The rather okay one, you keep for Scopus. Okay. Then comes the question, can actually concept paper get into Scopus? I will answer you shortly. Some of you have already joined us, probably watched the, the previous version. They know already that you can. So I'm going to share this to our new joiners today. All right. Then once all of these steps done in terms of consultancy, there comes two general more production, two more generals production, one more systematic literature review that you can do or scoping review with a very broad uh, angle or you can do meta-analysis here because you already finished your analysis here. And the final fourth what they call that um, fire, the final uh, victory of fire, oh, fire victory. Okay, the final victory is through your empirical paper. Okay, empirical paper. If you ask me, it's actually easier to publish than review papers. I have to, you know, tell you that it's not easy. All right. Okay. So this is how we guide. How do we normally guide in our consultancy? We have mode one, which we give content commenting. Once you already build, you can send to us. Our experts, we have over 70, uh, 70, now we have seven. I actually have a whiteboard with all my experts here with all the documents running here. Uh, we have at least 73 experts so far, all right, in different areas, different subject uh, topic, all right. So we will give very critical comments for you to improve your papers. Second mode is coaching. There are many coaching sessions going on on daily basis for us, all right, with our experts, with me and so on, all right. Mode number three, content editing for special cases. Our consultant or myself will help you edit in certain cases. It's case-to-case -case basis, all right? This is how we provide consultancy services, okay? Now, coming to part number five, research designs, okay? Research designs, now you already decide. I'm going down the, theory, the theoretical part or the practical part of writing my concept paper, okay? From there, I need to decide what angle I'm going to look at into my concept paper. These are the angles you can look at, all right? So you have uh, a theory synthesis, uh, theory adaptation, typology, and model, okay? When it comes to theory synthesis, it means conceptual integration across multiple theories, okay? That means you're combining multiple theories or literature streams, connecting the unconnected literature through different theories. You're bringing an idea together. You can do that as well. Second thing is theory adaptation. Okay, one is synthesis, one is adaptation. Focus on amending an existing theory by using other theories that you bring in to help to improve your theory. You close the gap. Okay, all right. Next thing, typology. Logically and causally combining different constructs. This is more on the practical part, yeah? Different constructs or dimensions from different studies. So this is more on the framework side, not the theory side. And finally, this is the most common one, model. Building a theoretical framework or conceptual framework that predicts relationships between concepts. These are the four types that you can choose. Or you can even write four different types on the same topic because four has four different angles. Then now, that means basically, you can write four different papers at the beginning of your proposal itself. You can have four different papers already, as long as you know how to strategize your one topic, break it into so many different angle, okay, concepts, all right? So as I said, this is a very, very effective session. I don't think you would have seen any of this uh, workshop or sessions that actually explains concept paper like this. So with that, I would like to request to all new joiners, please kindly hit the share button 
down there while you're watching and don't forget in the comment column tag your friends okay tag your friends so they'll be able to watch this very very important session which is an eye opener even for supervisors when they look at the thesis they can know that from this thesis i can generate one paper on theory synthesis i go on theoretical concept one on theoretical adaptation look at the limitation of it okay itself and one is on typology how to combine different constructs and so on to create new concept possibly okay and creating a new model these are all the important aspects of writing concept paper it's easy to say you might think it's easy to say how do i do this well that's what you have to figure out before this before you came to this session some of you don't know what is concept paper some of you tried to publish and miserably failed some of you has already published and want to and thinking that what else can i write so end of today as i expo, uh, promise to you you have a pathway i've already paved a journey for you to go ahead and choose what you want to choose and write okay so at least you have a vision now to write okay all right so part number six very very crucial whoever said that concept paper cannot get into scopus there you go i always cite, i always refer to this paper because this is a masterpiece of concept paper very simple very straightforward but it's a very very um very very good paper very well written paper and also thank you uh, prof sazali for recommending uh, this is one of our uh, most important papers that we proofread because concept paper getting into scopus is not easy okay it requires substantial work and this is a very good paper please go and read this paper if you want to know the structure of your write up okay how can you bring your whole idea okay so um thank you very much um appreciate that okay so for those who are still here with us this is just number six going to go to number seven soon before we go don't forget guys hit the share button tag your friends in comment columns okay all right so now let's go to the next part okay as what dr Prof. Sazali explained review paper is all about your content and language because there is no data to show there is no data to show even literature review in your chapter in, in your thesis is as crucial as your concept paper because they are mostly the same write up your delivery language is very 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 important i believe most of my uh, my my viewers today have already gone through our services they know how good we are and we are the only firm okay we are the only service providers for language per se earlier i explained about consultancy we also provide language we are the only one that actually give you language warranty do you know what is language some a lot of people ask me what is language warranty that means very simply i can tell you that if there is any comments from the reviewers from the examiners in terms of language as long as you meet our terms and conditions we will recheck for you okay all right we normally stay with you till the end of the journey okay all right so don't worry if your language is poor leave it to us don't worry okay so these are the different types of types of services that we offer proofreading editing is the very basic nowadays it's not really sufficient anymore because journal requirements are crazy crazy sometimes my native guy will be editing with me the paper and then they'll come back to us and then rejection happens for me as well okay it definitely happens if you go to any firm in the world rejection will happen even elsevier proofreading gets rejection okay i'm not going to tell you that we are perfect we are humans okay we are humans of course we will do mistakes all right but what i'm trying to tell you is um, we are not going to abandon you so don't worry okay our our success case is very 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 high it's very 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 good okay all right and we are the official proofreaders for many universities in malaysia okay so structuring is a very very important service nowadays because it improves your overall coherency you can see the changes here itself then comes paraphrasing which is crucial if you really want to go in depth changes or plagiarism or you can combine paraphrasing with structuring as well so these are the services that you offer with language warranty okay and we have a dedicated person who will communicate with you if you have any issues all right and to help out all students whether they are working adults or they are not working non-working adults and so on this is something i'm still continuing despite having a lot of requests which i can easily remove the promotion but i'm still sharing because um, we really want to help okay given the mco period financial difficulties and so on we really want to help so we are offering up to 30 percent off not only for thesis also for journals depending on the page count okay depending on the page count and this is an ultimate thesis package that we provide up to 30 percent off for proofreading translation 
and formatting services. Okay, all right. I don't uh, promote much on translation services because it's a very straightforward thing. Okay, can be done easily. All right. So don't worry if you want to get a very good uh, thesis package with very appropriate price. I'm not going to say we are cheap. We are at very we are priced at very appropriate uh, level to what we provide service level, and we give you warranty. So you don't need to worry. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's that. Now let's go to number seven. Okay, I shared this earlier as well. I'm going to share it again. What to have in a review paper structure? We are almost towards the end. Don't leave yet because I'm going to talk about what we're going to what I'm going to share this Saturday. Okay, what to have in a review paper? The actual structure. Resolve ambiguities. Any unclear part about a um, about a what do you call that uh, uh, concept paper or review that you write? You want to resolve any ambiguities. All right. So, uh, uh, Dr. Asma here just reminded me before closing session, could you please briefly explain about proofreading paraphrasing class this coming uh, Friday? Uh, not only, uh, kind of, not only I, we do it for you, I also teach you. I'm, I'm only, I'm the only class in Malaysia actually providing, I've taught uh, more than what, six or seven thousand students so far on paraphrasing proofreading. Why I started the initiative? Because software is killing students it's not killing business because st students struggle and then they'll come back then comes all this uh, you know ridiculous software that's being used for for thesis to paraphrase and papers it goes out of context so i started this class to teach people to paraphrase on their own as much as possible despite whether the grammar is good or not okay some element of proofreading will be taught paraphrasing will be taught with five different techniques okay this friday is the class you only have 11 seats left, unfortunately. 100 max, we're already 89 now, so only 11 left. Okay, no, I think less than 11, probably. Okay, so if you are interested to join our uh, paraphrasing proofreading class, please do contact me, all right? So the structure for review paper, first, you have to re resolve any ambiguities. Provide a comprehensive overview on the current state of knowledge. Very comprehensive overview. That's how you must bring the flow. Identify inconsistencies in prior results. Evaluate methodologies, develop conceptual framework as a solution, concept paper, describe roadmap existing gaps. These are very, very crucial. The final part, you must show that from my review, I'm telling everyone this is what will happen next. This is what we're going to do next. You must give the direction. That's very important as part of a review paper. Okay. These are the items you must have when you write a review paper. Okay. So don't forget, go through this. All right. Uh, don't forget, um, so we have a request here. How about private scientific article? Please kindly uh, PM me. Let me share uh, my uh, WhatsApp details. You can PM me directly to discuss further. That is the link coming up now. So just hit the button and you can PM me. All right. So um, that's number seven for today. Now, before we finish, I have three different three requests. First, write papers. Okay, whenever I share about thesis, the audience, my audience reaches 200, 300 easily. When I share about papers, I get 100 to 150 sometimes, all right? Because the interest in papers are rather low than thesis. The problem is it's been wrongly conveyed. You have to understand, if you write, the right, if you write many papers, you can use that to create your thesis, okay? Rather than you write your thesis so tough and then write your papers. Go the other way around as well. It works. Worked for me. I'm here, right here. Okay, so don't forget, write as many papers as you can. Okay, as many papers as you can, so that you will be able to convert all those into theses. And also, most important, don't forget, with your thesis as a fresh graduate PhD, it's very hard to find a job. You must have papers. Okay, when I had 12 papers when I came, when before even finishing my YBAR, I secured a job in Canada, University of Memorial, Memorial University. Okay, I, I at the at the uh, at the entry of my second year, second year, two years and two months, I have already secured a job in Canada. All right, uh, no, I think about two years, three months, if I'm not mistaken. All right, um, before even my viva. Okay, then after my viva, I secured two more jobs, one in Scotland and one in Birmingham. I chose the Birmingham one because Scotland was too cold and Canada was too cold. All right, okay, why? Not because of my thesis. First, because of my knowledge. Second, because of my papers. All right, no recommendation, no testable, nothing. They weren't bothered. All right, so it's very, very important to publish as many as you can, especially if you dream to continue and develop, grow in academic arena. Papers are very, 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 very important. 
So for that, please share the session, tag your friends in the comment column so you will help them build their future as well. Don't forget, I can see who is sharing, who is not sharing. <laughs> okay, all right. So next topic of for this week would be find the PhD topic and title. If you're still struggling in your proposal, come and join the session. Very important. If you're already in this stage, I don't think it's relevant. For those who are, who are at the beginning stage, please share this, guys. Please share with your friends. Help me share with your friends that we have a session to help them to start their PhD this coming Saturday, 11 a.m. So please ask them to come and join the session. Okay? Help them out. All right? So with that, thank you very much. You guys were great for staying for so what? what how long is it? 44 minutes now. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. For those who just joined us, you can go and watch the video in the link that I provided. Okay? So um, we have a comment here. Can't click the link. Sorry, brother. Let me share my number as well. So you can directly uh, WhatsApp me as well. Okay? So... Um, one more question. Doctor, can we write country-specific paper and publish in ISI or Scopus? Can. ISI got so many papers based on Malaysian titles. So many. Don't worry. Definitely you can. Okay? All right? So, um, thank you very much, uh, Brother Party Ben. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Noraza, for tagging, although it, we are towards the end. So, wish you all the best. Join me this Saturday. For those who are still into their proposal, at least we can get things moving. All right? So, that you don't start. Important, guys. Important in PhD. Please finish before time so that you can enjoy your life and carry on with your life. Whether you get a job after that or not, the secondary, at least you finish your PhD first. You can't drag your PhD just because the job market is so bad. At least you can do something with your life. Okay? So, thank you very much. Wish you all the best and uh, hope to see you guys soon. Okay? Thank you.